Aaron Sorkin is making an old play new again with his Broadway production of Camelot, a reimagining of the original 1960 show. While the play stays true to its original themes, Sorkin brings the production into the 21st century with a healthy dose of realism. I sat down with the three stars of Camelot, Andrew Burnett, Do Jordan Donica, and Philip Asu, one of the stars of the original cast of Hamilton, to unpack how they breathed new life into centuries-old characters. For each of you, were there historical figures that you leaned on, that you imagined as you were trying to channel these characters? I mean, I think the most obvious one for me was JFK and the sort of this younger person coming in with all of these new ideas for how uh, a system could run and all of these new systems that could provide for society's most vulnerable and actually work and, and not just feed the already powerful. Um, and his love of Camelot certainly helped as well. I was definitely channeling a little bit of AOC. Mm. You know, just mm -hmm. someone who is fierce and and coming into a space, having full ownership over who they are and what they believe, and yet having to navigate uh, what they're coming up against. There was a line. I want to make sure I get it right. I got a big laugh line the night that I was there. It says, um, oh, you'd be amazed who people will follow. Does that get a big laugh line every night? Does that land as being so contemporary? Yeah. Definitely. Absolutely. Very much so. Sometimes it gets a round of applause. Yeah. I mean, I think people are, <laughs> I think it's true. And what's also so beautiful about that line is everyone in the audience hearing it is not necessarily thinking of the same person. Mm -hmm. They're all having their own association mm -hmm. with whoever they think is an outrageous person to follow. They're responding to that. Mm -hmm. And it's true. It is insane who people will follow given their set of beliefs. And it is a play that is asking this fundamental question of who can be trusted with power, the principles of the round table, equality, justice. I will say they felt as relevant today as they did when it when the original book was written. How did you think about that in a contemporary context? I mean these aren't new ideas, the, the ideas of decency, civility, honor, justice, rule of law. They're not new ideas. What's new about it is seeing it in the context of this story that is being revived, revisited, and also seeing it in the context of our time that we're living in. I think that's what's so great about a revival, is that we do them not to just put something up on its feet again to remember what it was like the first time, but to re-examine it knowing we, where we are coming from and to ultimately, hopefully, be inspired by it see something new and different in it, learn something that we didn't see the first time and that we're seeing now and learn from that, learn how we can actually participate in our democracy. Camelot is a euphemism for America, for me. So like it's, it's, uh, it's very similar to Hamilton in a lot of ways. Uh, in my mind, uh, in, the, in the fact that it's, it's about an idea that human beings have to carry out every day that they wake up and they have to choose to use the power that we all intrinsically have for what we believe to be good, which again, this play is like, what is good, what is bad, what is wrong, what is right? Who has the answers for that really, ultimately? And you play a character who, when he bursts on the scene, is so idealistic that you're almost like, is this guy for real, mm -hmm. right? Like, no one could actually be this idealistic. Yeah. And so part of the ride you were going on is the experience of someone showing up in that way initially, mm -hmm. and then having real life intervene mm -hmm. and challenge that optimism. Mm -hmm. It also is the idea of being the other in a new space. It's yep. something that, that Philippa and I have talked about. The, all three of these leads who are leaders in this democracy are really outsiders trying to rule a bunch of people that they are uh, on the outside of. Mm -hmm. And um, that is just fascinating to me. I'm still learning, just listening and watching and partaking myself. Um, in that aspect too, again, that's a very American thing. You know, we are a country of outsiders, still struggling to accept outsiders. There's also a great line that's um, it's a dialogue between Jenny and Arthur, and uh, he says, "I didn't make the world," and and Jenny says, "Well, you make a part of it, right?" And I think that's important to remember that in any great movement, democracy, it takes participation. It takes your involvement, even if it's a small part. That's what it is. It's a bunch of small parts coming together to make a whole. And to feel like you're underestimated or um, undervalued or that your, your voice doesn't have value because it is so small, that's something that we actually need to remember is not true. A big revision in this one is that 
um, Arthur asks, uh, well, uh, Jenny introduces the idea that 999,000 people loosened that sword for Arthur, and <laughs> yeah. Arthur just happened to be the one who pulled it out. And I think that that's a, and Arthur says to her, that's a, at the end, his last line to her is, that's a nice thought, isn't it? That all of these people participated in this way. It, it's just a, a beautiful thing, and that is a metaphor for our democracy today, which is faltering, which is always at risk of being brought down, no matter how much ground is made with every generation, our democracy is always at risk of being torn down by forces um, who wish it harm. Um, and so the fact that all of these people tried to rise to the occasion to, to lead and didn't get it, and this one guy got it, only because those other people put in the work before yeah. him, mm -hmm. is, a, is a beautiful sentiment that I think is true of Aaron's Camelot. Okay, my last question to you, Phil, but at what point do you sit your team down and say, no more characters who are in complicated political marriages. <laughs> it's like, enough. Never, because it's the best. It's like the juiciest, most wonderful storytelling. It's where we see ourselves. I mean, I just think that, you know, history is told by its leaders and its warriors and its storytellers. And um, when the leaders are corrupt and the warriors have to follow those leaders, what are you left with? The storytellers.